So, um, I've had this, uh, I read this interview a little while ago, and, um, it is fantastic, right? It is, it is really, really good. Uh, I think it, it might be an old interview, I'm not sure, because uh, it's sort of, like, if you check here, like, it dates it, like, you know, 12th, 14th to the 12th, 2011, originally appeared in 1UP Presents, sketch issue, right? So, so, you know, it's 12... 12 years, yeah, yeah, no, 11, 11, is it? Yeah, 11 years old. Anyway, fuck it, regardless. Takashi uh, Nishiyama is the creator, the original creator of both Street Fighter and Fatal Fury. So, you know, when you're growing up and you're playing fighting games and you're like, you know, um, you know, like, the, depending on which one you come across, you're always going to get into that, you know, argument of like, oh, Fatal Fury is... King of Fighters is a fucking ripoff of Street Fighter, you know, because Street Fighter just blew up, right? In an interesting, you know, turn of events, right? The stuff that, from from what I gather in this anyway, the stuff that is essentially he created, um, which was put into Fatal Fury eventually got adopted in Street Fighter 2. So when we're talking about Street Fighter, we're talking about the original Street Fighter game, right? So uh, who designed, uh, uh, Takashi uh, designed the original Street Fighter at Capcom before leaving to run SNK's development division, <clears throat> putting games like Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown under his belt. In 2000, he founded the company that would become Dimps itself, a below the radar team that's worked on the Sonic the Hedgehog, Dragon Ball Z and Street Fighter series amongst others. Um, Nishiyama's intentionally shied away from the media over the years. In fact, he hasn't done a single interview in the 12 years since founding Dimps until now. Yeah, so it is yeah, 2011 interview. Uh, he recently agreed to meet at Dimps Satellite Tokyo office because he says he wants the company to change and move uh, into developing original properties and feels it's important to announce that public publicly uh, to make it happen. So we'll get to that, but to keep things off, I wanted to talk about his history. So... And this is a massive event. Like, I won't go through, it, like, every morsel in this. Um, but, you know, like, his first game design he worked on was Uniwar S. Uh, I remember that. Um, it was a ROM-based game that used Namco's Galaxian hardware. The second game was Moon Patrol. Yeah, I know that one, too. Yeah. Um, when he was at IRAM, he made a game called Spartan X. I think it was called Kung Fu Master Overseas. Basically, I was a producer on that game and Capcom headhunted me. Then after I moved, I was able to improve on what I did there and that became Street Fighter. So the original Street Fighter, right? Where you could only use Ryu and Ken. Um, unless, I think in two-player mode, I think you have more choices. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It's been a really, really fucking long time since I loaded it up. Right. Um, but he's the man. Like this is this 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 Jesus, right? And there's this dude. Like he's the man. Uh, what was the basic? Uh, that was basic design content. Part of it was coming from practicing martial arts at the time. Uh, I was also thinking games up to the point that were rather simple. Uh, prior to Street Fighter, there were shooters and driving games where enemies, objects would appear, and the player would shoot them down or avoid running into them. And I wanted to add depth to the story, and it just happened to be a fighting game. But I wanted there to be a story so it would feel like a movie. We eventually, uh, even, we even conceptualized details for the characters uh, that we didn't put in the game itself. What the characters might like to eat. Do they have sisters, other family members, etc. Street Fighter was different from prior games in the amount of depth we gave the characters. So apart from the story, what are your main contributions? All right. So biggest contribution was pushing the eight directional joystick and six buttons. Where would we be without them? Right, and the only deviation that I saw that actually has worked since then, right, the first game that came out since then, uh, that really sort of strayed away from that, I thought, was Mortal Kombat. Um, apart from anything, they reduced the amount of attack buttons from six to four, like if you compare, and then they added in a fifth button for block, and then a sixth button for run in uh, the MK3 Ultimate and then Trilogy series. Uh, initially, I created a cabinet that used pressure sensor mechanics at the time. Capcom didn't have any experience making large arcade machines, only tabletop games, and we had a mission to make a large machine. So we worked with Atari to make a punching bag where the game used pressure sensor mechanics to measure the player's punch strength. Unfortunately, that didn't sell too well because it was expensive, 
and it had low replay value because playing the game was exhausting. On top of that, Capcom didn't have expertise in selling large machines, machines so we shifted our direction and went for the joystick and buttons. What about the Fireball and Dragon Punch? Were those ideas? Yeah, that was his too. So, if you're ever going to argue between, right, who was the, who came out on top, right? Uh, who was there, the chicken or the egg or the fatal fury of the Street Fighter? Uh, it's both. It's absolutely both. Uh, I was inspired by anime and manga at the time. So, for example, Hadouken was inspired by a Japanese anime called Space Battleship Yamato. In that, the battleship has a laser missile called the Hadoho. Uh, it collects energy and then blasts it into space, destroying the enemy. That's where I got the idea for the Hadouken. So we're firing a giant ship. Uh, the Shouruken and Tatsumaki Senpukika uh, were original ideas. I think I said that right. I think I fucked it. Uh, I took martial arts moves and exaggerated them so they look like special attacks. Um, ever wonder where Street Fighter's main character got his name? It's because the symbol for the first Chinese character used to spell Nishiyama's name, Takashi, can also be pronounced Ryu. Ryu, Ryu. Uh, Dim submitted the above Sumire drawing showing off his trivia. That's so fucking cool. That's so cool, man. Uh, I, I asked this question a lot. Were there any big close calls during development? Um, uh, things in the game that came close to happening but then changed along the way. Most interesting story comes to mind is that most of the games at the time used the joystick and two buttons. So when I proposed the joystick and six buttons, sales team said that the game wouldn't sell because it was going to be impossible for players to control. Look at all the fucking buttons we use now, right? Four on the top, you know, God knows how many on the front, and then like the sticks are pressure sensitive and God knows whatever else. Uh, but I forced the development team to make it and explain that although there were more buttons, the layout fit people's natural form. And it does. When you think about it, like using a keyboard, uh, your fingers naturally sort of rest, you know, like for the three buttons across, well, underneath these four fingers, right? So depending if you're a pinky player or not, like you might just be in the three, in, you know, two on the pink, one on the think type, right? Uh, you get what I'm saying. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, how do you convince them? I explained that the top three buttons control punches and the bottom three were kicks, so it felt natural for players to perform the special moves by combining those. Uh, at least that's what I thought. But since all six were attack buttons and the players would attack no matter what button they pressed, that helped convince them that having more buttons wouldn't make the game overly complicated. Well, it's true. Yeah, it's not like sort of, you know, one's dedicated to being a dodge, one's dedicated to being a block, one's dedicated to, you know, um, a teleport and like... You know, so every single button didn't attack, whether it was a special attack, standing attack, crouch attack, it didn't matter. Uh, well, there are other big ideas that didn't quite make it in. There are a lot of things that didn't make it, but I was headhunted by SNK after its release. And many members of the development team and I moved over. So we went on to make Fatal Fury. And we put in a lot of the things we couldn't in Street Fighter. So for me, Fatal Fury is my Street Fighter 2, right? Uh, and the actual Street Fighter 2 was created by someone else at Capcom after I left. So that's where the vision of, for Street Fighter diverged. Uh, the continuation of Street Fighter that I had in mind with Fatal Fury and the Street Fighter 2 Capcom created. So there you go. Right. Now, I am curious actually because, like, my first SNK game that I played. Uh, was Art of Fighting. The Art of Fighting came out um, in what the band? There's a band called Art of Fighting. Um, it was uh, so when it first came out, I don't reckon early '90s. I need an actual date. Nineteen ninety two. Nineteen ninety two was out of fighting. Fatal Fury was nineteen ninety one. Okay. Yeah, so Fatal Fury. Yeah, so the first the first fighting game I played in the arcade was Art of Fighting. Um and it was cool because it kinda had that camera zoom in and zoom out effect, which was really nice and it felt like you're really like Smacking the shit out of people when you hit. Uh, but Fatal Fury came out before it. Um, what specific ideas that you wanted to put in Street Fighter did you incorporate in a Fatal Fury? Depths of the characters that I mentioned earlier, that was a big thing. 
Uh, the story and the character backgrounds were more polished in Fatal Fury. We came up with character details that weren't included in the game and shared that information through the media, magazines and books to get the users more emotionally attached. We did a lot more marketing and strategic planning for that game. Also for me, the difference between SNK's Fatal Fury and Capcom Street Fighter 2 is that Fatal Fury is more about special attacks. It's crucial when players release their special attacks, whereas in Street Fighter 2, it's more about combos. That's not something Capcom and I discussed ahead of time, but it happened to turn out that way. It's interesting because Fatal Fury, like, I, I love special moves. I know, I know people out there get real hard and shit over like combos. I don't give too much of a shit about combos, but I do love special attacks. I do love special moves. It's why I like, you know, things like MK11, you know, where it's like you've got to choose your special moves. I hate that. I just want to have my whole my whole cake and eat it too and Hadouken it out, right? So that's why, like, you know, when you play a, a you know, a, an SNK fighter, they are flashy as fuck. They are real flashy, right? Uh, and I'd say they're probably more flashy than what, if you compare the two, and you think about like the effects and stuff in those early versions of the original Street Fighter 2 versus Fatal Fury, pretty sure Fatal Fury, if you compare the two, is going to come out a lot, a lot prettier, a lot sexier. Uh, and that's because the focus is on that, right? So, um, whereas Street Fighter was leaning more into, I guess in a way, sort of more realistic combat in a sense, like obviously we can't do special moves in fucking real world, right? So you're going to be doing a lot of punches, kicks, you know, and, and things like that. Um, you were mentioning your headhunter by SNK was a hard to leave. Yes, it was very difficult. It was close to a lot of people. Uh, Mr. Tsujimoto even hosted my wedding and we had a personal relationship from back when I was at IREM and he was the president there. He left IREM for Capcom and I eventually followed him, but there were some differences in the direction that Capcom was heading and the direction I wanted to go. So there was a bit of a rift when I left to go to SNK. I'm going on a tangent here, but it, this is the first time I've talked to the media, including Japanese media since founding DIMPS. Even when I was at Capcom, I never really talked to the media, but DIMS is celebrating its 12th anniversary this year, and we're looking to change the direction of the company. So your interview request came at a very good time for us. I'm grateful to be given this opportunity. Since I've never really talked too much to the press, this is the first time I'm sharing these stories with the media, which is very cool. So I'll, I'll leave it there like, Jesus. <laughs> that, was, that was interesting too. Um, what was that about um there was something in here about like these boards so like if they brought out a new version they could essentially like open up the cabinet and put in the new cartridge and then you got it which was like really cool um what do you what game snk you're most proud of uh, i hope i don't this doesn't get misinterpreted i still consider myself an active game designer even though my title is president of dims but I've never made a game that I want to play myself. I've never made a game that I want to play myself because I think I have a different kind of album. I try to look at society from a wider, more objective view to figure out what might be popular in the market rather than deciding based on my own preferences. I've always made decisions based on what I think will be popular amongst the mass market, so it's very complicated. I think it's the difference between art and design. Um, so he's rephrasing it. What game did you work on the most? Most of the time on Fatal Fury series. King of Fighters already had characters from other games, so I was able to apply those to a party game. And yeah, like King of Fighters is. It's like the first fighting, like the first party game in the fighting game series. Um, but I think but I think the game most effort was Fatal Fury, especially because that was the first game I ever made after leaving Capcom. Bit of a story there. Because we released Street, uh, because we released Fatal Fury after Street Fighter 2, the public criticized SNK for copying Capcom without knowing that I was the one making Fatal Fury and that we started development before Street Fighter 2 was released. I am gonna do a video about the poison debate where people keep think, keep going on about the fact that they say that poison is a man. It's not, never was intended to be, never will be. And this is another one. This is, this is one of those like 30 plus years, you know, Arguments that you have with your friends, you fucking cat off. Uh, yes, SNK is just a rip off, right? Cheap knockoff of Street Fighter, and now you have the truth. It was in development before Street Fighter 2, right? So I felt a certain objection to that criticism. Now people know back then SNK and Capcom didn't get along. There was a big rivalry, especially on the business side. So there you go. I'll post the link for this interview in the description because it is absolutely fantastic it really is wonderful interview 
Uh, this is over posted on uh, Culture and Un Culture Culture Neo Geo. Is that how I say it? Uh, looks like it was Spanish Spanish website. Fantastic. Well done, dudes, for grabbing this and putting it out there. And um, of course, the original one was on One Up. So yeah, let me know what you think. But there we go. There we go. When you when you when you're looking at the two, it's Fatal Fury, baby. Fatal Fury. Anyway, guys, catch you next time.